Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm Dani, and today Crate.com talks with Chrissy Jones, Associate Director at the American Association of Adaptive Sports Programs. If you haven't heard of it, its mission is to expand and sustain a standardized structure for education-based athletic competition to improve the well-being of students with physical disabilities. Now, before we begin, remember, if you're new here to this podcast, press subscribe on YouTube or in your podcast app. Hi, Chrissy, and welcome. Hello. Thank you for having us today. It's totally our pleasure. I'm really excited to talk about sports today <laughs> and to learn more about you guys. So let's begin by knowing more what, about what inspired the creation of the organization and what specific needs in the community that you guys noticed back then and what do you see now? Well, in 1996, uh, the Paralympics came to Atlanta, Georgia. And when they came through, it really brought to attention the fact that we don't have or didn't have at that time um, athletics in our school system specifically for students with physical disabilities. We had able-bodied sports for students that didn't have any issues, and we had Special Olympics, which has been around since in the 70s for students with intellectual disabilities, but our students with just physical disabilities that were sitting in gen ed classes, um, they they didn't have an outlet like their, their peers. Um, so Bev Vaughn and Tommy Storms, who were the co-founders for the American Association for Adaptive Sports, um, they started a program in the DeKalb County school system in the Atlanta area um, that was based on the Paralympics, that the sports that the Paralympics offered. They started with wheelchair basketball, um, wheelchair handball, and, wheel and track and field to begin with. And they brought that into the school system, which had not, it, it was the first of its kinds program. And um, in the past, in the 27 years since then, um, it has grown and spread around the state of Georgia. Uh, different counties have joined the association, and now we provide that um, the athletic opportunities for students with physical disabilities. We train the coaches, we train the officials, um, and and we just give that structure like other sports and athletics programs in the school system. That's that's truly truly great, really wonderful to hear. And it's been a long journey, right? Uh, yeah. I think, yeah, from the '90s to now, a, a lot of understanding, I think, have been has has happened uh, about the the importance and the the needs to adapt to sports. But right now, what are what are the challenges that you see happening with your students? Because I I don't know if we fully understand like how challenging that can be especially when you mention about training uh training coaches training uh referees you know supporting schools what is behind that what is the need behind that right now well we've we've developed many partnerships with the department the georgia department of education and with the georgia high school association and with their assistance um the funding uh, these athletic programs are, they're not cheap, like, like every other athletic program. They, you know, you have to provide the equipment. They are specialized wheelchairs. Um, the students that come in and they have the equipment, they have wheelchairs. You don't want to use their daily wheelchair that they pay five and $6,000 for um, and risk it to get damaged. So in our organization, we're able to help provide um scholarships to provide equipment for the counties. Um, those specialized wheelchairs are about $3,000 to $4,000 a piece um, that they can use to play in. And then you, you, when you talk about bringing in coaches and training them, um, you know, that's, that also is a finance for the, the the board of education to get them trained. So our organization helps with that when that scholarship by providing the the training um, 
We have two trainers right now uh, in our organization, and we go to the counties actually to help them train their coaches so that they can teach them. Because wheelchair basketball, although it is very similar to stand-up basketball, there are some different rules, and you have to learn new skills. If you're not a um, a wheelchair basketball person, there there are new skills you have to learn. You have to learn how to teach a, a player or a student athlete how to work a wheelchair and dribble and shoot just like anybody else, but they also have to do it while they're rolling. So you have to learn special skills to teach those athletes on that. No, oh, it, it really is when you we look into perspective, uh, it's a wholesome job, right? And when you said about, oh, uh, we help them uh, get the grants, get the scholarships, go around that. Could you walk us through exactly how your programs work so we, fully understand that. Okay. Um, last year we were able to receive funding um, so that we could give two systems, two brand new systems into our program, a $30,000 grant a piece. And so the different counties uh, actually, for example, Peach County um, in middle Georgia applied for the Aspire grant. They received it. Um, so now I'm actually going into the county, helping them find the athletes um, because one of the beautiful things is with wheelchair athletics or with adapted sports, the athletes do not have to be wheelchair users. They have to have that medical, they have to have a medical condition that affects their bones or their muscles. Um, mm -hmm. And so they do not even realize a lot of the athletes are able to walk either with assistance with a cane or crutches um, or they are wheelchair users and or they may not even have any assistance. They can walk but they have that medical condition that qualifies them. So we go in and help them identify students in the, in their County. Um, we help them with the measuring because they receive grant, they receive enough money to purchase eight wheelchairs um, for their athletes, which is a huge expense for the County. If you're trying to start a program. So that gives them that good foundation um, of, what they need to start a program. So we'll go in and help them measure. We'll put them in touch with the vendors that they need um, to purchase their equipment. We provide them with their first set of uniform, with the uniforms um, and every, all, all, everything they need to begin a sports program for, because currently right now we have three sports. We have wheelchair handball, wheelchair basketball, and wheelchair football. All of them are played in a in a gym, so they do not have to build a special facility for them. Um, and then with the grant that they receive, they purchase, they're able to purchase all of the equipment they need to get it, all three sports up and running. Sometimes when I have uh, guests here, I keep wondering about the logistics of it all and okay. everything that goes behind this. And and I'm I'm still putting pieces together here. But actually, I wanted to ask you something else now, okay. uh, because we talked that, that this is great to know about the structure behind it. But let's talk about the people also behind it, uh, because you're dealing with young people, right? With students, with children, with teenagers. And in your experience, uh, what role does the adaptive sport play in building the self-confidence and maybe fostering the sense of community? trying to promote physical and mental well-being. How, how has your experience uh, been with this? What have you seen? Um, in my role at ASP, I have, I, like I said, I've been an official, I've been a coach, and now I work for the state office. In all three of those roles, I've seen where, as a coach, because um the team is made up of students from all over a district, a school district. So you might have a second grader and a 12th grader on the same team because um, you bring that whole community together on one team. It, it's not like your high school sports where your each high school has an individual team. We bring in from all over your county. And then those students may never even cross paths if it's a larger county because they go to all different schools. So they may never cross paths. In this, they build their own network. They, they get their own special niche of, hey, you've walked in my shoes. Can you help me 
overcome this issue. And so they build that support system, that network system for each other. Um, and it also gives a network system for the parents who may never meet each other. Um, and just giving them that opportunity to build those friendships and to be recognized in their schools as an athlete, as part of a team, um, you know, that just builds confidence and seeing students gain that confidence and starting to, hey, I'm going to adventure out and I'm going to try other things because they see, hey, I can be successful in this. I might, you know, I, I can be successful anywhere. I've had students that have started with me that um, because they, when they're born, they have these medical conditions. Sometimes the parents are super protective. And it's hard to let them go and, and, and try new things at times. Not all parents, but some do. And when they get out there and they see them just loving, loving being a part of a team, being competitive and, you know, just being that independent child that they want them to be from day one of their birth, you know, it, it, it does something for the family and it does something for the kids. Um, and, and you can just see that growth of, of both the parents and the child, um, you know, and we've had students that when they come into our program, they've never been a part of a group. They've always kind of been on that outside, on the sideline. And um, I had one young man that started with us that um, when he first came to us, you know, you would talk to him and say, hey, what are your plans for the future? Because when you start talking to teenagers, you're like, OK, what's your plans after school? And he never um, he never thought about leaving his small community. He never considered, hey, maybe, you know, this he, he thought about, OK, I'm just getting a job, which is great if if you have other options and that's what you decide to go with. But he never saw that he had other options. And he actually left us. He graduated from school went to a university, played wheelchair basketball on scholarship, got his college degree, and now has come back to our community and is helping coach the program because he's he's getting his te – he's finishing up his teaching degree and is now coaching. And so he's giving back what he got so much from. And and so that's just – it it'll touch your heart, you know, when you, when you see these type of things. And, and I've seen, you know, with my team and, and other teams in our association, the team that I work with, um, we have a hundred percent graduation rate for students that are on our, uh, on, in our program for four years or more. And you might go, oh, well, if you're in four years, that means you're in four years of high school. No, some of these students start in the second grade. So they that keeps them in school, that keeps them involved. They know they have to keep their grades up. They know they have to be in, in school, be present. Um, so it really builds, it builds a community and it builds the students physical and mental well-being so that they can accomplish what they need to in school and be successful adults when they finish. Wow, that that was a beautiful, beautiful story. Thank you so much for sharing, Chrissy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting I... choked up now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but wait, come on. <laughs> yeah. I am kind of choked up. And and I think it's a great testament about the work that you do, right? Because it's it kind of goes full cycle when you see something like this. You mm -hmm. you encourage someone and then you show them that they can do whatever they want to do, right? Regardless of what's going on. You can do this. You've got this. Make your choices. And I often think that it's so important to have people around us in life that support us that way, that keep us moving forward. So if you were able to be in that position, if you were able to create this environment for this young man to develop himself and believe in himself, it's really the best outcome we can always hope for in anything that we do, right? It's, Absolutely. It's, and, and that's the, that's what the ASP does is we we give them opportunities and they the kids take it and run with it and they make themselves. I mean, it's competitive, but it but it's but it's also more than sports. It's so much more than sports. And and that's that's the biggest thing is is getting people involved, getting students involved, getting volunteers involved to see what they're capable of. And, you know, um, not just seeing a wheelchair, 
That's the biggest thing. Don't just look at the wheelchair. Look at the person because they is they are not the wheelchair. They are the person, you know, and that's what you have to learn. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And thank you for sharing this this perspective with us. And I keep wondering about what it's like, what are actually your goals for the future, for a near future? What do you envision yourselves at in in a few years? It, we want to get our program around the state of Georgia even nationally, but really around the state of Georgia um, in basketball season. Right now we're bringing in three new teams, three new school systems are coming in, which will give us, we have two divisions. We have, we'll have six teams in our junior varsity and five in our varsity. Um, so just continuing to grow and offer this program to students, um, the value of it, like I said earlier, the value of it, for what this for what it does for student athlete and what it does to the family is amazing. Even the school systems, um, you talk to the superintendents that we're of the school systems we're involved, and they'll tell you it's one of the best programs they've ever brought in, just because of how much it involves the community, and it and it advocates for those athletes, um, the advocacy it brings into their system. Wow. So um, just continued growth um, in getting it more well-known with, with our um, with our systems. I think it would be wonderful mm-hmm. to see other programs happening all around the country. Like, it would be really, really a dream. And to those that are listening to us right now and would like to, you know, know more about you guys or donate, volunteer, what are the best ways to help you keep going? If you will go to our website, the American Association of Adaptive Sports, which is aaasp.org, um, there's opportunities to donate, and that donation goes to help buy equipment for athletes um, and to sponsor teams um, toward our scholarships that we offer our school systems. Um, if you'd like to volunteer, we um, we're always looking for volunteers to come and work the games. We play on Saturdays. So they always need volunteers to help and work um, the games, the the clock and the holding the down marker during football. So any type of volunteerism or um, any any financial donations would be greatly appreciated for our program. And it goes directly to our athletes. And guys, if you're watching or listening right now, you can go to the description of this episode and find the link for their page. It's pretty easy to donate and you can get so much more information about the work that they do in there. Well, before we finish, Chrissy, I want to squeeze in a quick, a small question for you here, a more personal question, because I think you saw so many students uh, pass through student life and struggle and sort of trying to find their places. And some kids don't have access to adapted sports so they don't have access to equipment they don't know how to you know go to the gyms they don't really have the means to go after that and we understand how important that is so if you could give an advice to someone that is new to this does not have uh as i said the mean to get into that what do you think that they could do to one advocate more for those rights or maybe try to go to find funding or, you know, really to get in touch, to really experience the possibility of adapted sports. What would you say to them? Um, I would encourage them to reach out to our state office and um, let us, we can reach out to board of educations and off and because we continue to offer these scholarships and, and these grants to help build programs in their area. Also, so the other counties are not limited to only students in their county. Some allow other students can. So if they reach out to us, if there's a county near them that already has an established program, we can put them in touch with those programs. So maybe they can go in and join those teams as well. Um, but, you know, of course, our ultimate goal would be that they have their own team in their own county. Um, so but please, I encourage everyone to that's interested to reach out to us so that we can help start laying that communication to their board of education or put them in touch with other established teams in their area. 
Oh, that's that's really perfect. Thank you so much for talking to us today, Christy. I really love this interview. Thank you, and, and I, I look forward to seeing it. And <laughs> thank you for reaching out to us. Um, you you guys do great work. It sounds like with the positive. It's it's so nice to turn on something and hear positives, and and that's what you guys do. So thank you so much for that. No, thank you. We we try to you know give as many hope as we can. Because it is, it is like a huge wave of negativity and bad news all the time, right? So, thank you, yes, ma'am. <laughs> and yeah, for and everybody listening, you're doing a great thing. So, thank you so much for what you. Do. <laughs> and for everybody listening, also thank you. And remember, if you enjoyed this episode, press subscribe on YouTube or new podcast app, because that shows the algorithms that this is an important conversation, and more people can learn about the importance of the American Association of Adapted Sports Programs. Bye, and I see you in the next episode. Remember, check the page on the description of this episode. Bye.